Well, that's it. It's uh, Friday afternoon and uh, we've had a really busy, I mean, we, uh, we've had a mega, mega busy week. And uh, I mean, <laughs> I like to think we're doing things right, but we have been busy and we're doing it on... Um, on limited resources when it comes to labour. It just seems at the moment there is a, a, a labour problem out there. No one seems to want to work at the moment and uh, in this landscaping industry. It looks like I'm going to get a cup of tea at the moment. So, yeah, a couple of things. Uh, yeah, labour is, is an absolute nightmare at the moment. Uh, trying to get people to work in this industry is difficult uh, simply because it's a hard job. Not everybody wants to do it, but it can be a rewarding job without a doubt, without, without one day whatsoever um because you know it's a great career you're you're moving from job to job uh, you're in different places every day you're learning new skills you're you're putting driveways in you're putting paving down burglars outdoor kitchens and creating outdoor spaces outdoor rooms it's building outdoors that's what we're doing and uh it can be a great industry, designing um, all sorts of methods, the Shosugi man, Yakisugi, um, you know, even those earth ram walls, if you've seen those earth ram walls, if you haven't, check them out, they're absolutely amazing. They're reducing the carbon footprint on the earth, but going back to those old methods of uh, building again, it's absolutely incredible. Um, and I remember years ago talking about Shosugi ban and Yakisugi, and people laughing at me because I was using gas and saying that the Japanese never use gas. But the fact is that Yakisugi is produced en masse now and they use gas. That's what they do. Anyway, um, yeah, the title of the video, uh, The Landscaping Onslaught, uh, you know, should I call it that? And I think that it is. There's going to be an onslaught of landscapers now that's coming into this marketplace for a number of reasons one spring is coming you get a real influx of so-called landscapers and contractors that are doing jobs on the weekend a hobble a job in the country whatever you want to call it but there are those landscapers out there that are doing that now and uh, because the spring is coming and also of course that um some people are struggling and uh, how they make their money up is they make their money up on the weekend by doing landscaping jobs. But the fact remains that even with the landscape industry as it is now, with the landscapers out there, um, there are a lot, there's a lot of patios and landscaping work that's going to be done basically wrong. And um, you say, well, he's got a nerve saying that, but I really feel that the standard isn't there. There's never ever been any really landscaping courses for hard landscaping. They're starting to come in now, how to lay a slab across the country in different places. You can go on these courses and you can learn how to lay a slabs, but there's a little bit more to it than that. When we look at landscaping, we're basically applying the fundamental skills of civil engineering, uh, building roads, because that's where it really started, road building and getting from A to B. And uh, I really feel that at the moment is that there is not enough skill set in the marketplace out there to produce quality work. Look, we all make mistakes and do we put all those mistakes right? Well, I like to tend to, I tend to think so that I put those jobs or those problems, those mistakes that I make right on a regular basis. And um, I do, you know, um, I like to think that I'm accountable all the time for what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. But there's no doubt that there's going to be a lot of failed patios. You see in the past I've done those, those uh, and it's not a clickbait, I've done those videos before on patio failures. And uh, there are plenty of patio failures over there. And as if by magic, we've got a cup of tea. And uh, young Dan, thank you, madam. Thank you very much. I've got a cup of tea coming to me now. Let's just grab this cup now because it helps me and and a penguin. Let's have a look a little look, see what the, the joke is on the back before we move on any further. I want to share this with you because I'm sure that some of you guys out there um, have done this as well yourself. So why did the penguin make a fish pun? Why did the penguin make a fish pun? Just for the halibut. Oh, there you go. Well, look. We talked about uh, patio failures. There's going to be copious amounts of patio failures this year. And you're going to say, well, how is he 
you've got the the authority to say that but the fact is i have in some respect because of the, the amounts of people that phone me up uh, on a regular basis asking me about patios that they've had installed and the things that has gone wrong with their, their patio firstly okay firstly is the jointing the jointing is failing on for many reasons and um, uh, a lot of jointing failures where the, the joints come out um, uh, a lot of those brushing systems i've used them in the past before because i've tried it to see what see what it was like and not good at all you have to use it in a different way to how the manufacturers want you to use it and uh, when you use it in the way that you feel will have more benefit the actual manufacturers don't like it because they want to make it a little bit more easy and uh, it's not easy there's only one way to actually put joints joints in uh, and a joint in product and that's the hard way and you've got to get down on your hands and knees to do it when you're doing sandstone and that's how i see it i think brushing systems and i know that they've got instamac have the the flow point product product and that is good but we always worry about where we're going to wash it and i think that a lot of these products that are used for grouting systems and i've used the prime slurries for porcelain paving before and it is difficult and they don't offer enough out there on education on how to grade patios and i think they should be a little bit more accountable rather than just putting instructions on the 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 the, the package or the tin or the lid whatever you want to do i don't think that there the instructions is enough they need some more training videos to show and take you through the process and hence that's why i do the videos like i do to try and help people in from those videos if they feel that something's wrong that's absolutely fine they're entitled to that but what it does it promotes dialogue where you start talking about it um i probably have about three to four hundred messages a week on through social media whether it's youtube instagram facebook uh twitter linkedin as well linkedin is being used for this and you'd be surprised the people that contact me they're not necessarily diyers or contractors but people they are manufacturers and they ask me questions of uh, how they feel that their product is working and it, if it would work for me um look jointing products is so important and it, it massive failure on a regular basis the next thing where patio fails are normally through delamination and people say you know i don't want to be sort of sort of condescending but delamination is when the paving separates from the water bed now when we look back when uh, sandstone started coming into the country in the past they used to bring it in in block form as ballast on ships to steady the ships then they realized then they could start to be they could start selling this stone so they started splitting it so when they split it originally from india and places like that is that it was a lot thicker 45 50 mil thick but it was all undulated up and down people were complaining about it but it was heavy you could lay that on a sand bed because it would hold in place you know a compacted sand bed or a screed mix and it would stay in place now sandstone has a high uh, porosity value it'll suck the moisture out of your mortar so when you have a heavy unit it will tend to stay in place we always got to think of sandstone as sucking up the moisture up that's why we need to use priming slurries now because they re reduce the thickness of sandstone and as a result of it it's just separating it's not good at all that's why we have to put priming slurries on the back that's one of the reasons so pointing uh, priming slurries delaminations that, that's another thing and of course sub bases sub bases aren't put in uh, in the right way and uh, we have to go back to methods that they use in civil engineering when they compact levels of sub base that you want a nice flat horizon you don't want your sub base to be undulated going up and down because when you have ground heave or ground swell as somebody called some people call it is what happens is the sub base will start unbinding that's there's a real exact science to the why they use mot type one on roads and they put it in at levels and compact at levels to ensure that the limestone interlocks and it doesn't move if your sub base is up and down and it's undulated like this you are going to have movement and it will delaminate through 
basically the pressures that are applied on the top through traffic and that's when you see driveways uh, you have tracking where the tires go and then you see the movement in the wheels that run up and down your drive and you've got to think a sub base you, you wouldn't believe it you think that a hardcore compacted hardcore is going to hold in place if you compact it and you put it in at six inches and compact it all in one go it's just not going to work all right so pointing delamination and sub bases okay so important to help your sub base is to put a geotextile underlay and that is a stabilizing mat basically that's going to keep your sub base in place so that's another thing that we can do to reduce it and of course after the grouting that's when we get the staining and um, there's so many things to consider all the time and i really believe that you'll find is that you'll have somebody that will ask their neighbor or friend of a friend or i don't know DIYer or not just a DIY, even some landscapers out there to do a job for them and they have had no experience in certain products and they don't know how to install it because they've been reading what it says on the can. Is it their fault? Well, yes it is. Is there an onus on the suppliers and the manufacturer? Yes, there is. Putting something out there just on the package or just having a video, like one video or maybe two videos of how to install it isn't enough. They need to keep updating, keep rolling uh, on how to uh, install these products they just need to keep telling people how it should be um, how it should be installed and if they don't do that it's just going to fall by the wayside and then that's when you have those mistakes and it's so unfair when people have spent their life savings to finally have that garden done a garden of their dream their driveway their patio their path whatever they're doing that water feature those raised beds um, and it just all goes wrong it's it's a really bad feeling and it's sad to see you know, I'd like to think that over the years, I've made plenty of mistakes, but I've always been accountable and I've always gone back and ensured that I would carry things out and I always talk to my customers. It's so important again, where failures uh, occur in this landscaping industry is usually through contracts because people take a verbal, uh, a verbal contract as being legally binding. And I believe that it, it is, but, Get a quote, okay? If your contractor can't supply a quote, a written, itemized quote and dated with specifications, method in there, date and some terms and conditions. And remember, terms and conditions are there to protect you and your contractor. And if you're not sure about the quote that you've had, you know, speak to your son, speak to your father, speak to your brother, your sister, whoever, and run over, run it through with them and ask them their opinion because they'll have a different opinion to what you'll have on that. And you need a fully written itemized quote with specification and method in them. And uh, you need a method statement and a description of what's gonna happen. And a little bit of product knowledge is key. Your contractor should also be telling you about your products. So we've covered a few things here, is pointing, uh, prime ancillaries, sub base, geotextile underlays uh, and, and uh, membranes, stabilizers to be put in place, contracts, all these things that we have to look at. And it would be a good idea to actually check out your contractor, your contractor's work and go and have a look and see what they've done. And I'm sure that if he's done a good job some, somewhere, his previous customer is gonna be over the moon and be more than happy to share um, maybe and invite you to come around and have a look what they've done and run through uh, the pros and cons of going with that contract is so important. So many things that we need to talk about. But it's Friday afternoon, okay? We've had a long week. I'm absolutely, totally shattered uh, for a number of reasons, probably because I'm doing all these videos all the time. So, look, thanks for joining. If you've got any questions, you can either drop an email, info at greentoplandscapes.co.uk or you can uh, just drop me a message through Facebook, uh, Green Top Landscapes, or better still, you can give me a ring on 07795. Am I really giving my number here? Yeah, I am. My number is 07795 595 
994. I'm more than happy to talk to anybody at any time, so just bear with me um, when you're calling me. I might not answer straight away, just try again later and I will get back to you or just leave a, a message on the answer machine. That's it now, have a great weekend. The rugby's on, Wales are playing England. Good luck to both sides and uh, wherever you are, wherever you're going, if you're making a journey, be safe. And um, as I always say, if you can't say anything nice, don't say it at all. Have a great weekend. See you soon. All the best.